So in Esther chapter 8, verse 8, we see Esther doing this. She comes before the king. I know Vision Church people know this because I love this verse. Esther chapter 8, verse 8, Esther comes before the king. And it says she found favor with the king. And the king stretches out his scepter of favor to her. And he says, ask whatever you want. Now let me point out that here in Esther chapter 8, what's happened in the previous chapters is that Esther answered the call to step up and make a difference. And then Haman himself got exposed and his wicked plots against Mordecai and his wicked plot even against Esther and the king ordered Haman's execution. That happened in chapter 7. So Haman's dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead, okay? So why in the world are we still talking about Haman in chapter 8? Because Haman had the king's signet ring on a decree. And even though Haman was dead, that decree of death and destruction wasn't. It perpetuated. How many know that there's been some generations of some things that have gone on in the past, and that generation is dead, but we're still living out the fruit of things that happened. We're still living out that, that outworking of those decrees. And so Esther comes before the king, and, the, and, she, and he sa she says to the king, she says to the king, this is what's going on. There is a decree of death and destruction against my people. And king, I need you to do something about it. And so here's what the king said to her. He said, Esther, you yourself write a decree. Okay, understand, that decree's there, but listen, you yourself write a new decree. Write it in the king's name, seal it with the king's signet ring, because whatever's written in the king's name and sealed with his ring cannot be reversed cannot be revoked. Now listen, you may have come from a family of broken, uh, with a history of broken families, divorce, drugs, addiction, whatever it is. You've got these generational things coming down the line. That's why you need to come get healing and deliverance. But let me just say this, is that the enemy rides on those generational curses and tries to perpetuate decrees against your life. Until we rise up, we take hold of the word of God and we say, you know what? I'm going to decree a new decree. I'm going to decree a new decree over my family. I'm going to decree a new decree over my children. I'm going to decree a new decree over my health. And yeah, maybe my mama and my grandmama and my grandmama's mama had this disease, but I'm not going to have this disease. I write a new decree. There's something that's in motion. That was Haman's decree. But he said, you yourself write a new decree. Are you getting it? You can actually go write a new decree. Write it over your business. Write it over your family. Write it over your ministry. Write it over the things that concern you. Write those things and speak them out of your mouth. Job twenty two twenty eight. you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you so light will shine on your way. Who's going to decree it? Not your pastor. Not a prophet. Let me just tell you. Some of you have got prophecy after prophecy after prophecy and it's not doing you any good yet because you're not decreeing it. You shall decree a thing. You know what that word thing means? You shall decree the word. You shall decree the promise. You shall decree the prophecy. What has God said to you? You need to be saying that. Out of your mouth. Or write it into a decree and then say it. So Esther got this authority to write a new decree. So she and Mordecai went and began to write a decree. And here's, the, here's what they decreed. This, okay, so Haman's decree was very specific. On such and such a day, wherever you find a Jew, wherever you find one of God's people, you can kill them and take their property. That was the decree. So what did Mordecai and Esther decree? They decreed that if somebody came to kill you and take your property, you are fully authorized by the government to rise up and fight back. It was an authority to fight back against what the enemy was bringing against you. 
Let me just say this, church. We are not a helpless church. We are not a hopeless church. We are not a powerless church. We are not just being tossed to and fro by whatever the devil wants to do today. I'm telling you, we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We've got royal robes on us. We've got a crown on our head. And we are not subject to every whim of the enemy. So we need to quit acting like it. We got to get in the word and find out who we are. We got to get in the word and find out about the power that has been invested in us. Come on, all of us have had bad things happen. But we got to shake it off and we got to allow ourselves to start rising up and understand it's a new day. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them it's a new day. And so in Esther chapter 9 verse 1, it says, On the very day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, so on that day that we're talking about, On that day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, the reverse occurred. And instead, the Jews had power over those that hated them. A reversal happened. It's the word hapak, H-A-P-H-A-K. A reversal happened. And what happens over the next several verses is that there is a great slaughter. Because people listening to one decree were acting on that decree. And people that were listening to Esther's decree acted on that decree. And God gave the Jews power to overcome their enemies. Okay, we're, okay, we have a prophetic act, okay. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. They're sowing into the new day. Generations, okay? Generations. And those are going to be, those are my grandkids too, so claiming those as well. So, so understand this. So understand this, that a great slaughter happened, and during that slaughter, Haman's ten sons were killed. Did I mention they were killed? So why in the world do we need to hang them? They were already dead. I love it when you read about David killing Goliath. It says that he took the sling and and the stone went and it said it hit him in the head and he fell over dead. And the next verse said, and so he died. (laughs) He died and then he died. And then David cut his head off to make sure he stayed dead. (laughs) Okay. So Haman's sons were dead, but now we're going to hang them. Let me read you something else that happened between the decree and the hanging of Haman's sons. Because something incredible happened. Let me just tell you this. Is that in the, in the uh, Esther chapter 8, the king gives them this authority to write a decree. And so it's very specific, and it says, I think the date was the 23rd of Sivan, I think is the day in Esther, in Esther chapter 8. Mordecai and Esther came together and they wrote this decree. The crazy thing was, I must have read Esther chapter 8, I can't even tell you how many times and how many translations over the last seven seven years. But when I read the 23rd of Sivan, it popped in my brain. I wonder when that actually is. And it was the 23rd of June which actually was the day that I was studying it. Is that crazy? So it was like, I wonder when this is. Oh, it's today. (laughs) And then the very next day, Roe v. Wade was overturned. You can't make this prophetic stuff up. It's It's just crazy. 